welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brittany and I'm on a mission to hit 3,000 subscribers. So make sure you click that button below. I would appreciate it. Guys, it is so weird being inside, like so weird. And I know by this point you've already seen my crafting video, which technically I'm actually filming this before I finish the end of that clip. So that's kind of like weird. Um, because before I finish my end clip, I wanted to like clean up this space, if you get what I mean. But I have to assemble my machine. Because as you guys seen when I was bringing her in, I was looking back at that footage and like my skin was crawling seeing my baby on basically what looked like upside down. I will be honest with you guys. And in that video, I did specifically say, we didn't have to do that all because my husband listened to me, which like, do guys ever typically listen to their spouses? No, but he decided to at this point. And yeah, um, <laughs> I had to take off all my thread, which as you guys seen in another video, I talked about, I wasn't going to do that. And I had to anyways. So what we're gonna do, since all my thread is technically taken off, I might take this opportunity to actually change some of my thread positions around. Cause I did make mention in one of my videos that I do like leaving my, I, I set the needle size. I think it was the thread size wrong. This is not it. Um, where is she at? It's, it's these two. Oh my goodness. It's these two. It's my black and my white. I believe these are my 65, 60, don't quote me on it. I always, there's so many numbers going on with embroidery, like I just lose my mind. Maybe this is 60, needle 65, something like that. Basically you wanna use these for your tiny fonts. And I figured black and white are very, very common with embroidery. And I do like to leave these on my machine. Since I do have 15 needles I am working with, so I have the ability to do that. So I'm probably gonna end up sticking like these two in an inconvenient location where it's not as easy to reach to. And I'll probably show you guys that soon. So yeah, I wanna do that. I'll probably end up changing out every single needle. Let me put those down. And the reason I'm going to do that is there was a, there was a project that I did, never even filmed it because I took on projects while I was trying to move and it was a it wasn't that it wasn't that it was a disaster to do like that but it was just the machine itself was just like pulling my hair out as you guys can witness right here um and I was getting a lot of like fraying of my thread which typically means that your needle is going bad so I'm like as soon as she gets here She's getting all new needles. So every single one's coming out. We're gonna go ahead and do a deep clean on the top, especially since that's where a lot of the dust does tend to settle. Um, and then we're gonna oil her up. We are going to do the work. So I am talking way too much, it's over three minutes, so I do apologize. So let's go ahead, get this baby set up. And then of course, in another video, I am going to be running a tension just to check on that because obviously she has not ran one project since moving here. And I'm really curious if it caused any problems with flipping her, what I wanna say upside down. So crossing fingers, there are no issues there. Cause if not, we're gonna have to make a call to Rakoma. So yeah, Let, let's, let's get to the cleaning. So you may, not no, but your actual like, I don't know what you wanna call this, but this does go up and down. Obviously when we moved it in here, I did move it down. So before I actually do that, I wanna actually clean like in between these rails because they're gross. However, I don't really wanna spray directly on there just because I still do have thread running through there. Um, some crafters, to be honest, have completely de-threaded. Um, I don't have crazy written on my face, so we're not going to do that because that is the works in order to do it. So I'm just going to kind of, I mean, I am messing up my thread, but again, it's nothing compared to like actually re-threading the whole thing. And as you guys will notice, just on like two pass overs, like look how disgusting that is. 
Like that is gross. So we want to make sure, I'm just gonna keep kind of pulling the thread. I know it's like, oh no, what did I, okay, no. Yeah, I almost did. I just, I really don't wanna sit here and um, mess with all that. So let's just keep kind of pulling her. Am I blocking you guys? I definitely am. It's not as easy because I do have this up against the wall. So it's not as easy to like sit on this side and talk, but we'll, we'll make it work. Now I'm just kind of going back over just to kind of get some of the spray residue. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm actually just going to go ahead and kind of loosen this up and I'm just going to raise this up. Well, I don't need to go all the way. So I'm just going to raise that up to a good amount. Did I, you know, it's so crazy. I don't remember how, 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 how tall I had it. I, I mean, she can go pretty high. I'm not, I'm definitely not doing that. Let me grab a thread. Don't fall. Don't, oh, you see her going down. All right. Cause my thread is typically about that height anyways. Let's actually put it where it would affect it. So, I mean, just to, you want to go up high enough. So when like you're pulling your thread out, it's not going to hit the, that's kind of what I'm testing. Like, so I think this is a, that, that was a good height. Let's just go there. Let's tighten her down. You know, I'd be really curious to see if she's actually level. Let me go grab a level because, you know, let, if we're going to do this, let's do it right. All right. So I just went grab my level. And as you guys can see, she is centered. I did correct it just a bit on this side. But now she's leveled. So let's go ahead and get the bottom base cleaned up so we can start threading.
And then I'm basically gonna stick um, white straight in front of it. So as you guys just seen, I just went ahead and threaded everything. It took a lot longer than I was wanting it to, but again, I'm taking my time. There's zero rush. I have no projects that I need to complete. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to kind of look at all my knobs. I'm going to bring you in a lot closer just to make sure like everything is fine. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and change out our needles. I want to show you what I was just doing. So obviously these are the knobs. So it's like one, two, three. And when you look at your needle or your thread from up above, you see these holes. This is one, two, three. So you need to make sure that your thread is going through each of them. So like one goes into one, two goes into two, three goes into three. And I'm not doing a great job at showing you because I'm pointing at it. And that is the way that it needs to be threaded up, which is kind of what I was just doing. So again, you're gonna be like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? And as you guys can see back here, it's kind of how it's matching it, which is the one, two, three. From here, you're gonna wanna make sure that all your thread, you can't even see it because honestly, it's so tiny. One, you wanna make sure that your thread is going through this little back hole here. So I did have to just go and I think make one correction. And then obviously you wanna make sure that it is running through like your tension. There are like two little knobs here, so it needs to run through, it needs to go through here. What we are checking right here is I wanna make sure that all my heads are facing the correct way, which they are. You also need to go through and make sure that your thread is going through. This is another tension knob. So making sure that is all correct, which so far looks good. This is another one. It needs to make sure that everything is running correctly. So that is looking good. And then again, we have these, I believe only one, see how it's crooked. So I just, you just honestly, I can easily just run my finger through it and it kind of clears it up. Um, you wanna make sure that nothing is actually overlapping. Let me show you. Sometimes like this thread could come over here. So you wanna make sure that that's not happening and you just wanna kind of correct it. So there's, that and I just pulled it from below. So again, all that is looking really good. And then we are just gonna come down here. This is honestly, a it's not that it's a mess. Actually, look, if you looked, I believe I, I have this wrong. I do, look, that's, that's actually incorrect. It just needs to come through here, back here, and it's not. It's actually coming through the front. That can cause a problem. So this is why we checked everything. And then from here, you're gonna make sure it just kind of goes down in these little holes, and these holes are gonna run it to its, its needles, which we're gonna get to in just a second after I crack that red. So there are two things I would like to go over real quickly just to have you guys avoid it. When I first started embroidery, if you guys will notice, I know my, my nails are ratchet, it's fine. We're not here for my nails. The thread, I'm trying to focus. You see how the thread sits behind this lever here? 
I actually did not know that and I used to have it running over it. And this is actually a tension bar. So you need to make sure that your thread is behind that lever. And then another thing too is when you come down here, obviously some of it is not corrected because I am gonna change out my needle. But if you look at this one, you see how it's behind that little loop right there? The thread is behind this like loop. You need to make sure that it is behind that. I did not know that either. And when I had my Rakoma rep come out here, he did tell me, so I had to go ahead and correct that obviously. Most are not like that because again, we're gonna be taking out every single needle and we're about to replace it now. So if you guys could actually let me know what kind of content you guys like. Do you like my videos longer or do you like them shorter? I am trying to do at least like, I wanna do shorter videos on some things because I want it to be like a quick reference point for you guys to go back on. So I will be focusing on a few short and hopefully you guys don't mind some lengthy ones. I'm trying to cut them down, but I don't actually realize how much I'm talking in the moment. And then when I go and I edit it, I'm like, oh God, girl, you wouldn't shut up. So, so that's kind of where I'm at. And I just, I want to know what you guys are liking. I know you guys are enjoying the video. I appreciate everybody who's commenting. I try to comment back on everybody. If I'm not like physically commenting, of course I'm giving either like a thumbs up or a heart, one of those, because I want you guys to know, I do really appreciate everybody who's coming over to the channel. I, again, I don't, I don't do this for money. I honestly do this for love. I just got this machine gifted to me and I've been able to run my crafting off of it. And I noticed that when I do watch a lot of YouTube videos, no one's going into the struggles. Like everybody's like, here's what I ran. Look how great it came out. And I'm like, okay, but where are the cuts? Like where are the cuts? Because there's no way that every single time you're running something, it comes out with no issues. And I feel like people will be like, oh, I ran into problems, but they're not showing us said problems. So a lot of things I've honestly have learned on my own. I know a couple people are like, oh, how did you learn to embroider? Um, you know, you're doing pretty good with it. I will tell you when you do buy your Rakoma, they do a live class. And I did join that class. So if you guys are interested in picking up a Rakoma, I do have a link down below you can click on and uh, they will direct you to a representative who will be very, very helpful to like get the Rakoma like machine process set up for you. Um, depending on the machine you buy, if, if you buy this one particularly, which is the MT1501, they will do a live seminar with you. I believe I only had like four other people in the class. So it's in my opinion, very small and quaint. You do have to be live, meaning like they do record you. So keep that in mind because they want to make sure that what you're doing is accurate. They're seeing what you're doing. They're correcting you if you're not making, you know, corrections. And I will be honest with you, when I did mine, there was a girl who got really like flustered and she just ended the call. And I remember specifically because there were two people on the call, they were like, call her back. So they ended up, more than likely, they probably did like a one-on-one -on -one with her because she was getting a little flustered with hooping the hat totally understand but by the time I personally did my live training I was watching so many videos that Rakoma does offer for com for free that I kind of went in a little bit more confident I will also list the video on how you hoop or thread your um how you how you put your thread through the machine because I don't have the like technology like the advanced cameras in order to like show a good angle so i will go ahead and link that down for you guys below it, it is going to be helpful i promise if you guys have to go back to the video a dozen times just to figure it out do it trust me i've been there i've done that same exact thing so you're not alone we're all learning together if you have specific videos you do want to see me do let me know i know i've had one person who asked me to like kind of break things down a little smaller so I do have those videos coming because as you guys know, we moved to a new location and it is hard to get clientele. I'm not going to lie. Like I didn't realize how good I had it where I did. I am still going to try to continue to get clientele there, but it is going to be a lot harder because it is like an hour away from where I moved. And so, yeah, that's just, you know, what we got to deal with. So we're still cleaning. Um, 
So that is all done. I'm going to go ahead and kind of bring you guys in a little bit closer. I'm gonna show you my, my needle part process. Actually, I can just show you real quick. I do always have these linked below. This is the one that Recoma does recommend because this is for commercial grade. It's the 75 titanium. And then also I do have the two smaller threads up there. So we need to do a smaller needle, which is, I have so many needles, it's not even funny. 65, so this is the 65 needle. Come on, focus. There we go. So that is the 65 that I will end up using as well. So I'm actually starting out with my 65 needle just so I get that out of the way. Um, what? And obviously I wanna make sure I do not forget and then we're just gonna tighten her up. All right, so that's. I'm gonna try to show you my best to install a needle. It just keeps getting defocused and I've tried a few times. So I take my tweezers here and I will clamp on the physical needle. Now the needle itself has a small divot in the back, which uh, maybe you guys can see that right there. And that you wanna make sure is towards the back of the machine and you want the flat part facing you. So again, I take my needle and I'm just going to put it through the hole. As you'll see here, I'll put it through the hole and then I just put it up. Now, if you feel that the eye of the needle is not facing you correctly, you can actually take another needle. You can stick it into the eye and before you tighten it, you can actually rotate it. Now, the best thing to do is actually hold it in there and try to rotate it, but sometimes I feel like my fat fingers get in the way. So I honestly just tighten it pretty slowly. Um, sometimes I will grab my little tweezers and I will rotate the needle that way as well. And again, we're just going to slowly tighten this. And as you guys can tell, the machine is fully set up and it is on. Now, is it working? I don't know. We're gonna check that in the next video. We are gonna run a tension test. We're probably just gonna run an image just as an example, just to make sure that when I put it upside down, <laughs> I'm like being sarcastic on that, 
that nothing got messed up. I did go ahead and put my brackets on. All my thread is attached. I went ahead and added all my bobbins. I added, as you guys seen, all my scissors, my tweezers, all my Allen keys, everything like that that I normally like to keep on my machine. I did oil it up as well. So we are set to go for our tension test next. So if you guys are enjoying my content, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next crafting project. Bye everyone.